The time has come to once again open a box, find out what's inside, and then make something with it. Today's box of choice. Ow, sorry. It's the Art Snacks Plus box. And I noticed they have new tape. Let's destroy it. <laughs> Right off the bat, we are greeted by some bang fang. Acid-free Bristol paper. There are 20 sheets, and they have a smooth surface. Ooh, nice breeze. So it's 9 inches by 12 inches. Also in the box. Bum, 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 bum. We have a bubble wrap bag. Here are the two menus. This menu lists all the items in the Art Snacks box, and then this menu lists the extra additional items that come with your Art Snacks Plus box, one of which is the paper. They made this all spooky for October. We got a lemon lime dumb pop. We got looks like some Indian ink. Probably smart of them to put it in a little bag. I don't know if you remember if you've been here that long, but I ordered like a big thing of India ink from Amazon and the bottom was crushed. I had to like tape it up, but it made a mess. Anyway, I like how it has the color on the cap. Okay, that's interesting. It's not a dropper, but it does have a interesting cut pipe sort of look on the end of it. Then you have that deep black India ink. So we have two Plumchester paint markers, water-based acrylic paint marker with a reversible nib. Oh, so one side has a five millimeter chisel and the other side is a three millimeter bullet. We have one in black and one in white. The ink has to be activated, thoroughly saturated into the nib. So what you usually do is you kind of like squish it, usually on a piece of paper, not your finger. And you also do a little uh, shaky action and you can activate it. it. Takes a little time. There it goes. Very nice. We'll have to see how opaque that white pen is over top of the India ink. This one, you can see the ink slowly saturating the nib. Let me just see what this reversible nib is. One side has like a chisel. The other side was rounded. <laughs> oh no. This one works real nice. I don't know why I just wrote the letter B. There. White is just a little bit more transparent. You could probably layer it up, build up the opacity. Did you see that? That better have been on camera. We have the October Art Snacks sticker. That's a nib. Usually goes in like a dip pen. <laughs> Look at there. Here's the handle to our dip pen. I actually have this exact same handle that I bought along with that big thing of India ink. Ta-da! A mistake I made in the past was that I ended up dipping the ink further than the nib and it got all over the handle and then it got in like there and then I forgot to clean the nib. So you gotta be very proactive <laughs> cleaning your nibs. Don't want to leave them sitting in anything moist. There is Senlier 917 in the color purple ink brush. Watercolor finish. So it's like a watercolor brush. Here you have the brush and has not yet been saturated. So this will take a little prep too. So you remove your little black ring. Bye. Screw this in and it's going to puncture in there. Now the ink can free flow. You can see the ink. Look how pretty it looks. That looks like I'm drawn with grape juice. It's a little bit more saturated there. Also, we have the Fine Liner by Windsor and & Newton, and it is water resistant with non-fading pigment ink in the color blue. Finally, Plumchester paint marker. So it's the same as these. You do a little prep. This time, I'm gonna leave it at the chisel. It's punctured at. A little shake. There she is. Apply more ink. Yeah, it seems like the chisel is a little bit drier. We can like turn it to the side and get a finer line. It goes this way and have a thicker line. Okay, I like all these colors. These are actually gonna work. We will not be drawing in the box. Okay, I'm probably not gonna bore you with this, but I'm just gonna re-swatch them all in the here. This is probably one of the best watercolor pens I've ever used. I usually have trouble with it like drying out as I'm using it. We'll see as I use larger spaces. Oh, that is fine point. It doesn't actually feel like I'm gonna break it. Sometimes they can feel really fragile. Finally, the dip pen! So, with India ink, you can dilute it with water to get different shades, or you can use it straight out of your little uh, reservoir and pretend you're in Harry Potter. <laughs> Now the thing with dip pens is that you really want smooth paper because if it has any sort of texture to it, when it gets caught, it holds back, but your wrist keeps going. And when your wrist keeps going, it's gonna hit that little dip and then the ink is gonna fall off of there. It kind of explodes in a tiny little way. So when that dries, we can test its waterproofness and we can apply some of these other art supplies on top. We can try this out. Okay, the blue pen actually smudges a little. I want to make sure this is dry, because I know with India ink, if it's not completely dry, it will smudge. While we're waiting for those to dry, I'm going to just doodle a little bit. Here 
It's a deer! Build up some of the lines to get them wider. Is that an antler? Maybe it needs more. There we go. Don't have a reference for that area. Trying something. This has gotta be dry by now. Oh, it's actually got like a raised texture. Let's try this over top. Looks good. I'm actually a really big fan of this. I've never found a watercolor brush that I liked. Is this the day? Let me try this one. Very opaque. The blue pen does get picked up by this, which I guess we discovered with the white one. What about this? Oh, ooh, no, what about that? Doesn't quite work. Maybe because this is more grippy on the end, that wasn't as dry, but when I used like the brush over top, it was fine. It becomes permanent. So Pluff Jester, I believe, is Art Snack's original brand. Well, that's cool to see them expanding their art supplies. Especially with something that works really well. Put it on par with all the Posca pens I've tried. That's it wet and that's it dry. I gotta admit I like the dry color better. Ooh, we can layer them. That's pretty. I'm gonna wait even longer for this like letter D to dry and then we'll try it with the Plum Chester pen on top. But once again, let me just doodle a little something. I still have no idea what the plan is. We'll find that out together. But I think it is kind of fun to sketch with this. Although for whatever we finally decide on, I don't think I'll be able to because it doesn't seem to like the acrylic paint very much. This angle is such a hard one to draw arms in. Kind of like how flowy and uh, bouncy that sketch turned out. Yeah, it picks it up and moves it. That is an acrylic thing. Once it's dry, it shouldn't. So I don't know if it's the formula. Let's just make that less straight edged on the end. Give her some clothes. Just kind of drawing out a little. I'm gonna give it a squeeze. Really lay it on thick. So a little side slit would have been cute. You know what's bugging me is that these two lines end so close together. So I'm gonna bring this one down. Look how precise. It's been a little couple minutes since I've used my dip pen. The nib picked up a little bit of paper, which is creating a really thick line instead of that fine, beautiful point. That's how much I got without dipping again. Not too shabby. Ooh, that's kind of cool using it with like a hatching technique. Also feeling the need to draw sage do stripes. I think I get to get creative when you have such unique uh, assortment of art supplies. You can also get water and dilute it. Got me some water and a paintbrush. Something like that. Using water to stretch it out. Kind of dried too fast on me. Try applying some of this. And then water. Stretch that out. Different shade. But then you kind of get streaks that I'm not a fan of. Trying to make it interesting with different lines. It's not going well. Kind of what I did with that like embroidery drawing of sage. I diluted my acrylic ink for that. This ain't looking so pretty. If I have this pen ready, ready with the water while I apply this. Kind of just makes it look more pink. Kind of have to do it this way, I feel like. I'm glad I am experimenting before trying to create an illustration. Working a little better. Still kind of like becomes gray instead of white. A little annoying because I don't know what else you would use the white for except to go over the black and go over purple. But that has a similar effect. We do magic dots. Oh, I love the white on the black because it looks like stars. I have some decisions to make. Could grab a pencil. So we're in sweater weather. Maybe I want to draw a sweater, you know, on a human. Or do I want to draw a sweater on a deer?
I didn't think I would like drawing with something so thin, but it's growing on me. I don't think it's like my new go-to or anything. You can get like the fine details a lot sooner, but sometimes that makes my art stiffer, so we'll see. I want it to be more of a cropped sweater and then a beanie. Actually, beanies go over the ears usually. We'll add a little pom pom. A footsie. Then, how do we use the colors? Black leggings or something? And maybe some boots. And some fun wavy hair. Let's start with purple and pink and white, maybe for the sweater. Find some fun shapes in here. Oh, they're hearts. They're supposed to be like little like scales. But I think I like the hearts. Almost hearts, like you see hearts in it, but they're not necessarily hearts hearts, you know? Maybe something solid with purple cuffs. Pink pom-pom. I'm winging it. And black pants. I'll use my paintbrush. This should all dry pretty matte. Hopefully. I'm kind of trying to use a white line to separate the legs so it's not one blob. Use this for hair too, since that's the only color we've got. Oh, we could go with like a snow boot. Then we can maybe go pink. Maybe use the dip pen. I kind of like the use of the white space. I think it adds a lot of contrast. I'll use the dip pen for like the face and everything. We don't have any skin tones, so I guess that's just gonna stay paper white. I mean, I could use pink. Okay, this is the most inspiring thing I think I've made so far. So let's maybe explore it as like an illustration. So with like composition and all that jazz. I think my favorite part is just the matte black legs because you don't have to actually draw in any details. It's just a solid chunk. So let's uh, thumbnail some fun poses or something. This is so overdone. I'm gonna pull that beanie back a little, make the hair more prominent. Kind of reminds me of that elf character I made last year. What did I name it? Like Melon or something? So if she puts her arm up, that sweater's gonna pull up a little too. I don't know, it needs something on the outside, you know? Don't ask me what I'm doing, I don't know. Yoga? This, I'm just kind of using this pose to explore the shape of the sweater. Oh, I love that oversized look. Okay, maybe she's like an airbender. So this would all be black. Something that might be cute is if like the torso is tilted like that. The head comes out that way, but then the body got the arms stretched out like this. But then they're standing. So then the sweater would be like right here. And then you get those sleeves. The hair would come this way. Beanie. You get the boots at the bottom. What do I do composition wise? Snow. This is like my crutch when I start adding in little stars. Give her a deer in the background. Wow, that is not bad of a deer for without a reference. I just pat myself on the back for a second. Well, if I shrink the deer down, put it further in the background, and maybe I can take the antlers and kind of copy the pose she's making with the arms. So it would be more like the antlers would just kind of come further apart and kind of fill that space back there. I'll have to find a reference of a deer sitting first. While I'm thinking about it, I, we might as well just start sketching. Could go pink colorize pencil. That might be smart because there is pink in the illustration, so it'll fit. I try it out on this Bristol board. And we'll kind of see how well it fits composition-wise on this piece of paper. The feet will end around here. You want the head like here, arms out like this. Exaggerate the body shapes first. And that sweater, it's gonna be more like this rectangle, like this. Some ears. Like proportion-wise feels off. 
Maybe it's the torso is really long. Yeah, I think it's the torso. I tend to draw short people because I am short and I do not understand the proportions of a tall person. <laughs> I think the other thing is like the body looks like it's just going straight up instead of curving. Soften it up a little. I also brought the shoulders down a little which is shortening the torso. Draw this in. Which means the hands go there. Now the arms are really short. It's always something, eh? Now do I want to try and fit the deer back here? Let me look up a reference. Man, they're pretty big mammals. Let me just draw a boulder and a knee, leg attached, and some kind of tail. They kind of sit on their legs and uh, this is their massive thick neck. Maybe we'll have to put the antlers up this way. If I'm gonna have something big on the right side, she should have been moved over to the left, so that's not gonna work. I could just draw it smaller. Or just stick little bunny rabbits that are like doing the same thing. Gotta put one over here too. A little bigger one over here. Probably look up a reference, but I kind of like the way these look. And if I look at a reference, I might realize how wrong they are. And let's give them some hats. Some matching hats. Okay, now this one looks too small. We don't want them to look too realistic because like clearly they're not supposed to be. More like Pokemon. <laughs> this could be fun. This is fun. Yeah, why not? I like it. I'm trying to convince myself. Find some of the details in here. Maybe give him a scarf that matches. He's a little closer than he is. Maybe I can just level out. Oh, we have to find out the details. Now you're not gonna see anything with legs, so we have to get make sure the shape is right. That's the only real thing you'll see. Hands are right here. Should we give her gloves so I don't have to draw hands? Did I say that out loud? <clears throat> what would her hands even be doing? Probably will do gloves though. Solid color. That's what this. Do we want like some polka dots in here? Or is that too many shapes? I think it adds something to it. Not too shabby. I'm just going to go ahead and erase lightly, fade out some of those areas. We could do the sweater. Seems kind of easy and they dry really fast. Beautiful, opaque, solid color. The pink trim laces. Some of these hearts are pink. Ooh, some of them are a little separated from each other. Widening will help. And bam bam. I'll just do the bunnies last because I don't want to like end up coloring them something that doesn't make sense until I can see what I'm doing for everything else. Ooh, it kind of spreads on this paper. I probably should have experimented with that. There's purple cuffs. We should use the dip pen and do the top and work our way down because ink dries so slowly. Here we go. Dip, dip, dip. It's bleeding outwards. Do you see that? But it's like spider webbing out from wherever I put it. Unlike in my ELO sketchbook where it was staying put. Works fine for eyebrows though. Eyes are always nerve wracking because you mess those up and everyone's gonna notice. You mess up like a finger or something. Chances are people will just, you know, look at your eye and go, oh nice, and move along. But you mess up the hands, they'll be like, nice. This is all gonna get filled in with black because I don't need to be strategic. Eyes are all right <laughs> after that big speech. Ooh, yeah, I gotta say this paper's not smooth enough, I feel like. It's getting a little draggy. Shapes. 
shadow back here. That's like the back side of that sweater. This hand. Oh shoot! I started doing a glove on top of the thumb. How do I make this look like a pointer finger? Not talk about it. I could probably just quickly outline it and see if I like the way it's looking. Can do these boots. The lace comes down a little far. Something I can improve on in the future. This one's a little bigger than this one. Now we grab our paintbrush. We can fill in the hair. Okay, now we just color this in. That is why I like ink. Oh, that matte, flat texture. Getting a little bit of buckling in the crotch region. Applied a little too much ink, maybe. And let that dry, maybe work on the bunnies. I just have to add in the ink, I guess. I just wanna make sure I don't put my hand in any of that. There's another ear. Oh, why is that spreading out so much? Should have done it just in my sketchbook, I guess. I'm kind of glad I added the bunnies just because it's something I don't usually do. So it's a little different. I'm proud of myself for committing. Oh, I forgot the hat. Uh, might be too late. Okay, I don't know what happened with these arms, but I have regrets. Maybe that'll be a pink bunny. That way I can use an opaque art supply on it. All right, pink for like their little nosies. Maybe the insides of their ears. I guess there'd be pink here. And then I guess we need to add in the hearts. The bunnies didn't turn out, but again, at least I tried. I wonder if I could add like a cable knit texture for this sweater with this really fine pen. I know once I make like a big mistake, I don't mind experimenting as much because then it just feels like I'm sketching. <laughs> That's actually kind of cool. I might do that on the other side. Add some texture, that's for sure. I might just add little tiny hearts instead of the polka dots. I think that ends it for me today. This bunny ruined it for me. But I'm really happy with like the design of this character. I think she's really fun and I would totally draw her again. Especially this thumbnail. Oh, I love it so much. We lost our deer, but we've gained two bunnies. Well, a bunny and whatever this is. I like it needs a circle behind it. Here's some of the art we made today, sketches and doodles and whatnot. I wanna thank Art Snacks for sending the box to me to try out and share with you guys. I think I have a link in the description for a coupon code. If not, I definitely have a link to their website. Anyway, I wanna thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me as I tried out some different art supplies. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!